pick up the connect cards and sing our opening <coughs> hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, found on the screen or in the hymnals on page 133. <laughs> Would you please join with me in our unison opening prayer? Heavenly Father, this morning is about you. Please help me worship you with an undistracted heart. You know how my mind wanders to my upcoming week, present worries, and thoughts of others and other things. Help me put those thoughts away and focus on you and your glory. Would your spirit cause my heart, soul, mind, and strength to exalt your holy name in my singing, listening to your word, and interacting with your people. Amen. Please be seated. Before we start our prayers of celebration and care this morning, um, I just want each and every one of us just to take maybe 20, 30 seconds and just silently pray in our own hearts. There's a lot of stuff going on in our community and in our world that I think each and every one of us should just take a little time because we won't have time to get to all of them today. But so before we start, just take a, a few seconds and pray in your own heart for the things that are going on uh, in your life or in the world today. Heavenly Father, as we're gathered here today, we pray that your presence would fill this sanctuary. Lord, as we start to look towards those cold, dark winter months, when that anxiety and that depression can set in, God, we pray that you would enter into our lives and fill us with the, the, the light and the joy that only you can bring. God, today we want to remember all of our farmers and our ranchers as we uh, for the most part, we came through the storm unscathed, God, but we know for our brothers and sisters just a little bit to the west of us, Lord, they, they had a little bit more than we did, and we pray that you're with them. And God, it's been a tough year for, those, for, for, for all those that work outside and work with animals and with crops, and we just pray, Lord, for 
uh, some good weather to come towards, towards the end of this month just to help us get those crops out and, and get the cattle worked. So God, we just pray for the farmers and the rangers that you would continue to, to be with them and give them the patience that they need. And God, as we turn towards our prayer list, we see so many people with a, a new form of cancer. God, we pray that you would just enter into all of these people's lives and that you would heal them. God, we pray today for Janae and Donna and Nikki and Cheryl. Lord, as they, uh, as they go through their battles, remind them that they're not fighting these alone. That they have a, a God that loves them and a, a church family that, there is, that, that is there for them at all times. So God, as they go through these fights, we pray that you are with them and that you remind them that they're so cared for and they're so loved. We pray for Brooklyn today, Lord. We thank you for her getting to go home. We pray that you would continue to bring healing into her life and, and give the doctors all the knowledge they need to know how to treat what she has going on. And for Charlie, God, we pray the same. With this infection, Lord, we just pray that you would uh, heal him, Lord. Heal him with this infection and, and just continue to be in his life, God, and remind him that there are so many people that love and care for him. For everybody on our list today, God, we pray that you're with them. Lord, there are so many things that we have going on, whether it's a, a physical thing or an emotional or a mental or spiritual, God, we just pray that in all of those things you are there. That your presence would fill those that are afflicted. And for those that are around them, Lord, just help us to be the light that we can be. To be the light of Christ, to shine for all of those that need you the most. We pray for, for Caroline and Dorothy in our care centers today, Lord, and pray that you are with them. That you're reminding them how much they are loved. And not only for them, but for all of those that are in our care centers, God. Help us to spend time with them, to go and to sit, and to share our stories and to hear theirs as well. We thank you for the, the ministry work that Brittany and Sean are doing, Lord. We just pray that you are, you are making these connections happen on, on college campuses. That you are putting students in their path that they can meet, that they can share the gospel with. As those times are hard when they're away from home and they have that freedom, God. We pray that that freedom is filled with choosing you, that they choose you. So thank you for Brittany and Sean and their commitment to do that. We thank you for the finance committee of them giving their times and their gifts and their talents, Lord, to spend uh, working for the church, Lord, to, to make sure that we're financially stable, to help make sure that everything is ordered, that we can continue to, to spread your kingdom. We pray for our brothers and sisters over at St. Lawrence Catholic Church. God, we pray that you would be alive in their lives and show them your goodness and your grace. So God, we pray that you would continue to lead us here at this church. That we would follow you in all that we do. That we would seek your, your face and your kingdom in all of our decisions. Not only personal, but church-wide. So God, we offer all these things to you today in the way that you taught us to pray. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please rise as we sing our next hymn, number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, found in the hymnals or up on the screen.
Please be seated. You'll notice this morning that we, we don't have uh, a scripture that we're going to read. It's because today during the sermon I'm going to tell you a story, and if we read through the scripture you'd know the ending already. So I don't want to give it away, so we'll go through the scripture as we're going through the sermon today. So at this point, I'd like to ask the children to come up for some children's church. Where should I go? Right up here. Good. everybody doing today? You guys can come up a little closer, okay? As long as you promise not to touch the table. You guys promise? All right. So what do I have here? Milk. Milk. Right. What is this? Chocolate. Chocolate. And just so you guys know, I tried it last night. It's really good. I had to, I had to make sure just for you guys. So I'm going to do a little demonstration for you guys today, okay? I'm going to fill these three glasses with milk. Okay. So these three glasses, they represent three different people's lives, okay? What do you think the chocolate represents? It represents when we accept Jesus into our lives because Jesus is sweet, okay? So watch this. This glass never accepts Jesus, this life, and it makes us sad. This glass accepts Jesus. Do you guys see it? You see the chocolate in there? Okay. So this glass... This glass accepts Jesus, but not only do they accept Jesus, but they get super excited about it, and they start doing all this stuff. They start reading their Bibles, and they go to church, and they're in Bible study, and they're telling people at work all about Jesus and all the good things he did. So you can see it, right? It's really dark. So let's, let's do a taste test real quick. This one. Well, that tastes just like milk, right? It should. It's just milk. Let's taste this one. Well, that tastes like some pretty good chocolate milk. Let's taste this middle one. What do you guys think it's going to taste like? But wait, this tastes just like regular milk. Why? Because I didn't stir it up. That's right. All the chocolate's sitting there on the bottom. It, is it technically chocolate milk? Maybe, I don't know. It's got milk and it's got chocolate. Chocolate, chocolate that's right. You see, when we accept Jesus in our lives, and some of you guys may have done that by now, and some of you are going to do that in the future. When we accept Jesus, we have everything we need to live a Christian life. We have our lives and we have Him. And it's our choice whether we want to let it sit or whether we want to stir it up. Now, we want to stir it up because we want to be known as Jesus' people. We don't want to let it sit and let it sink and just let it sit there. We want everybody to know, hey, I love Jesus, and I want you to love Jesus too. If we were just supposed to accept Jesus and then get called home, that's what he would do. The day that we accept Jesus, he would take us home and put us in heaven with him. But if we are still on this earth, if we still have a heartbeat, that means he has a job for us. That means he has something that he wants us to do. He wants us to be doing something for him, whether it's for our family, for people at work, for our friends, for people at school. So we should continue to always Stir it up, okay? Would you guys pray with me? 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for these beautiful children. We thank you for the joy that they bring into our lives and, and just the, the chance that we get to, to play a role in their lives and, um, and teach them more about you and just get, to, just get to know them and let them know how much they're loved by a God that created this world. So God, we pray that today, whether these children have accepted you before or will someday in the future, God, we pray for that moment to come and just for it to be a meaningful one. And in our own lives, God, we pray that you help us stir our, our, our lives up to be Jesus to those that are around us, Lord. Not to just let, let it sit and sink inside of us, God, but to go out there and to do what we can for you. So be with these children, Lord. Um, continue to bless them, Lord. Protect them. And we just thank you for the joy they bring in our lives. Amen. All right, ladies first for suckers. Good job. Go over. No. All right. I know I'll leave it to me to bring chocolate milk into a sermon at church, but... So I'm going to... Pastor Tom says you guys don't take jokes very well. So I'm going to try one and just see. I seen it last night. I hope it might be a little better than one of his, but we'll see. Why, why do any ships that come from Norway have a barcode on them? So when they come back into port, they can Scandinavian. <laughs> See, you guys aren't that bad. If the person beside you isn't laughing, would you explain it to them? <laughs> Scandinavian. <laughs> All right. Today, we're going to pick up in the Old Testament in 2 Kings chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 8. So, there is a, a woman that lives in a place called Shunem. We never find out what her name is, so throughout the whole story, they just call her the Shunemite woman. And she lives in this town called Shunem, and it's her and her husband, and they're, they're kind of a wealthy, you know, kind of well-to-do family. And one day, a prophet named Elisha comes through town. And she says to her husband, I want to make this guy a meal. I, I think there's something different about him. I want to make him a meal. And so the husband's like, sure, let's do that. So the next time he comes through town, she makes him a meal. And she sits down and, 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 and they eat together. And when he gets up to leave, she says, this prophet Elisha, he is a man of God. There's something about him that's different. And she says to her husband, you know what I want to do? She said, I want to build a room for him. I want to add on to our house. I want to make another story for him. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today, is stories. We're going to talk about how in our lives we have scenes, but they, add, they all add up to a greater story. Who in here is on social media? This might go better in second service, but who in here has a Facebook account? Okay. Snapchat or, uh, or Instagram. They have these features on them that are called stories, that you can upload something to it, and you know, it's usually a short you know, five to 10 second little thing that you can add on your story. And when you add it on your story, all of those people that follow you on social media can look at it and see what's going on. Now most people, when they add to their stories, they don't add right when they get out of bed and their hair's all messed up and they haven't done their makeup, or in the middle of a fight with their spouse, say, hey, look at this, we're fighting, isn't everything cool? They don't add it at those times. Because when you tell a story, there are three parts. Where the story starts, where the story stops, and then what part you're gonna skip when you're telling that story, right? Because we all have those parts that we wanna skip. We all have those things in our lives where we wanna skip these different pieces and parts of the story. Those are the scenes of our lives. And so really, if I could have my way with Facebook or Snapchat, I would change it so that it wouldn't say a Facebook story, I would say a Facebook scene. Because a scene doesn't tell the entire part of the story. So let's go back to the lady from Shunem. So her and her husband decide to build this extra room on top of the house for him. And so they do. The husband says, yes, let's do that. And they end up building this extra store and they put a bed and they put a lamp in there. And any time the, the, the prophet Elisha comes through town, he has a place to stay. And so the one time he comes through town and he's laying up on this bed and he has a servant with him named Gehazi. And he tells his servant Gehazi, he says, 
Gehazi, go and ask the Shunammite woman what can be done for her. She's done so much for us. Go and ask what we can do for her. So Gehazi goes down and he, he asks the Shunammite woman, he says, what is there that we can do for you? And the woman says, I, I have nothing that I, I need. Uh, we're wealthy. We have money. We have our health. We are able to, we can bend the, 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 the commander of the army's ear at any time. So they had connections. They knew everybody. You see, the Shunammite woman, she knew she needed to do something for God. She knew there was something else going on in her life that she needed to do. So she made a meal and then she built this room for the guy. But she didn't have a wish list. She didn't see God as Santa Claus. She didn't say, if I do this, maybe he'll do that. I'm going to tell you kind of an embarrassing story. When I was a kid and I used to watch the Vikings and it'd be like in the fourth quarter and it'd be really close, I would try to make deals with God for the Vikings to win the game. <laughs> now there was a time in my life when I used profanity and still do when I work cattle, but we won't talk about that at church. Um, but when I was younger, I'd say, okay, God, if the Vikings can win this game, I won't swear until Tuesday, okay? <laughs> Good with that? And then it gets a little closer, and it's maybe we, we lose the lead, and I'm like, all right, Wednesday, Thursday? What, what are you thinking here, God? Till next Sunday? You tell me. But I would try to make these deals with God. This for that, kind of a quid pro quo. But the Shunammite woman in the story, she doesn't do any of that. She said, I have nothing. I don't need anything. She said, we're good. And so Gehazi goes back to Elisha and he tells him, she said, they're okay. They don't need anything. And, he, and, and, and Elisha goes, does the woman have children? He says, no, she doesn't. He said, go back and tell the Shunammite woman that this time next year she'll give birth to a son. You see, her story doesn't start in 2 Kings chapter 4. Her story starts many, many years before that. Her and her husband had tried to have children, but it never worked out. They never could. They were unable to, to have children. And so when Gehazi goes down there and he says, Shunammite woman, Elisha said that this time next year you will give birth to a son. And she goes, don't. Don't play with me. Don't mess with me right now. She said, we've tried, but we can't. Don't, unless it's going to be true, don't tell me this stuff. And he says, surely I tell you, this time next year, you will give birth to a son. And a year later, the Shunammite woman gives birth to a son. And you see, if, if we were taking like a big offering or something today, maybe that's where I would quit the story and say, see, if you do something good for God, it's going to turn around and everything great will be good for you. But that's just a scene in the overall story. You see, there's so much to it. There's so much more to it than just she did something, she had a son. Because we pick up in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 18, a little bit further down. This son had grown up a bit, and he's out in the field with his father. And uh, they're working, and it says that the son starts to get a headache, and he's kind of dizzy, and he, he's kind of falling down a bit. And so the father does that age-old wisdom of what every father that since has kind of used as the model. He says, take him to his mother, right? <laughs> so take him to his mom. So the boy is brought to his mom, and about noon that day, on his mom's lap, the boy dies. Right there. And you see, the mom could live in the scene she, she had a choice to make. She could live in the scene or she could go ahead and remember that there's a whole story a part of it. That there's much more than just this one little chunk, this one little piece. And she goes right back to where that dream was conceived and she takes that lifeless boy's body and she lays him on the bed in that room that she built for the prophet Elisha and she goes to him. But she, because she knows that she needs to go back to where the dream started for the dream to continue. And so she goes to Elisha and she said, hey, I told you that if you were going to give me a son, don't mess around. I don't want any of this stuff where all of a sudden he's here, then he's gone. She said, you promised that I would have a son, so you, you got to do something. And so this prophet goes to the house and he goes into the room and he lays his body on the boy's body. Nothing happens. And he gets up and he lays his body on the boy's body a second time. And the boy sneezes seven times and he wakes up and he lives. And the mom falls down and rejoices. 
You see, what I, what I love about this is, is she knew that nobody around her could help. She knew that it was only this person where that dream started, this person that, that started the story kind of in motion. She was only able to go and get the help from him because he was connected to God. And what I love is Elisha comes in and he's a prophet. He's connected to God. And it doesn't work the first time. He tries that first time and nothing happens. He tries the second time and the boy sneezes seven times and lives. How many times in our life do we try something once you say, okay, God, I will try it your way. You try it once, it fails, and you say, enough. It didn't work. Even a prophet of God had to go twice. Even, even this prophet of God had to try another time. It wasn't this first time that it was going to work. It took another time. And in our lives, we have to do that. In our lives, we can't quit after that first time. We can't pray once for healing and expect it just to come the next day. It's not a wish list. So the woman has her son. He's alive. And a little while later, this prophet Elisha comes back to her and he says, Shunammite woman, you need to be a foreigner in another land. We pick back up in 2 Kings chapter 8 now. We're in 2 Kings chapter 8. And she, he, he tells her, Shunammite woman, you need to move to another land because there's going to be a, a seven-year famine in your land. So the woman and her family, they pick up and they leave Shunem and they go to a foreign land and they live there for seven years. And at the end of seven years, they come back to Shunem. And when they get there, they find someone living in their house, someone putting crops on their fields. And they ask her, what, what are you going to do? And she says, I'm going to march to the king and I'm going to get my stuff back. I love this woman. She said, I'm going to march to the king and get my stuff back. And I think we need to do that. How many of us need to march to the king to get our joy back, our happiness back, our marriage back, our family back? You see, along the way, there were going to be people that said, he's not going to listen. You are just the Shunammite woman. He's the king. We have people in our lives that are like that, that try and stop us, that say, hey, it's as good as it's going to get. That's it. Just accept what it is. But not this woman. She says, no, I'm going to march to the king, and I'm going to get what's mine. And so she does. And you've got to love how creative God is, because if you know the next part of the story, it's so cool. Because while she's going to the king, do you remember the servant of Elisha Gehazi? He's standing next to the king, and the king is saying, Tell me some of the miracles and the wonders that Elisha has done. And Gehazi goes, well, there was this one time, this, this woman from Shunem, she was unable to have a baby. And he, and he prophesied, and a year later, she had a baby boy. But that's not it. That's not it, King. That baby boy died, and Elisha brought him back from the dead. And all of a sudden, the palace doors open. And in walks the Shunammite woman. And you got to imagine Gehazi standing there talking to the king, and he hears the doors and he looks, and all of a sudden just, that, that's her. That, that is who I'm talking about. And the king says, what do you mean? This lady I'm telling you about, the one that couldn't have children, the one that, whose son died, and, and then Elisha brought the son back. That, that's her. And she walks in. And the king says, woman, is this true? And she says, yes. Everything that he told you is true. And you see, the king could believe it because that miracle was standing right beside her. She had that son with her. And the king said, give this woman back everything that she owns and pay her for the seven years of interest of the, the crops that she lost on that land. And it was returned to her. But if you would have asked the Shunammite woman, tell us your story, she would have started her story way back at the beginning. She would have started it way, way back at the beginning about how we couldn't have children. And then all these little scenes add up to her story. But what do you think the part is that she would have skipped? You know that she looks back at that time where she lost her son and it hurts. But without that piece of the story, she doesn't continue moving on and get her land back. You see, each and every one of us have a current assignment that we're doing for God, and all of our future victories for him depend on us completing that current assignment that we're in right now. Everything that we do today will wait for us in the future.
because someday we will be living in the fruit of today. Think about Jesus. He said, Father, if there's any other way, take this cup from me. And if he would have skipped that scene where he was on the cross, there would be no resurrection. Men and women, I know that some of us are going through a pretty tough scene right now in our lives. We got a prayer list that's so long. And if we were honest, we could double that prayer list. And I don't know what the outcome of your scene or your story is going to be. But I do know that we can trust the author of that story. Because it is a scene in an overall bigger picture. So whatever the battle is, stay in it. Stay fighting. Because you have a God that loves you and a God that cares about you and he is on your side. Would you pray with me? Jesus, as we're here today, we thank you for the love that you give us. We thank you for the joy that you bring into our lives with, with new births and with, uh, with good, clean bills of health from the doctor. But Lord, we also know there are times when we lose people. And there are times when we, we get a call from a doctor that we don't want to hear. And we pray for those people that are hurting today. God, we just pray that through your examples in the Bible that you'll be with us, that you'll guide us, that you'll show us how much you care for us. And in those times when things are hard, God, we pray that you would not leave our side. So for those that are struggling today, God, remind them that this is just a scene in the overall story, Lord. And you work for the good of all of those that are called according to your purpose. So Lord, be with us. Guide us. Show us the ways that you want us to be. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Would you please join with me now in our affirmation of faith? We follow Christ who comes to us from God and reveals God to us. He heals people and transforms lives and calls us to join in his ministry. He was crucified, died, and was raised again by God and reigns over all creation. And he bids us to die and rise with him in the service of the healing of the world. We are confident in the forgiveness of sin the power of resurrection and the reality of eternal life. In all things, it is our desire to follow Christ by the grace of the Holy Spirit for God's glory. Amen. Please rise as we sing our hymn of response, Be Thou My Vision, found on the screen or in the hymnals on page 451.
Please be seated. We will now take our morning tithes and offerings. Please join me now in our unison offertory prayer. Lord, we are thankful for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, Blessed Assurance, found on the screen or in the hymnals on page 369.
You see, the Shunammite woman, the story that we pick up with today, it started with her doing something small. That kicked off her story. She made a meal for someone. And then she just kept looking for opportunities at how she could serve God through it. Which glass are you? Where are you at today? Are you stirring up your faith daily, weekly, monthly? Does it need to be stirred up? Wednesday nights at the church, it's live here, serving almost 200 people. But Christy could use more help downstairs. I got a call from DeFay Transportation that said, there are too many middle school students coming. The bus is too full. You'll have to come pick them up. That's an awesome problem to have. But on a Wednesday night, I usually have one other adult helper with me. This church is alive and active, and there are so many places that we can fit you in. Your gifts and your talents, there's a perfect spot in this church to plug them in. So if you think it's time to stir up your faith, see us in the office. We'd love to, to find a pretty good spoon to help you with that, okay? We love you guys. Jesus loves you. Whatever that scene is in your life right now, it's a part of the story. We can trust the author. Go in peace.